Amy didn't have an assignment on the Yeah, Amy's gonna make it. Yeah. Okay. Any word from Judy? How things are there? Uh, the daughter's having a doctor's appointment today uh -huh. to say to get clear to drive or not drive. Hopefully, she gets clear to drive. Which which side of the board do you stand on? You are you righty or lefty? Right. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Then we give it that. You'll be standing here where I'm, I'm secondary. standing. Secondary. I would I would focus it on the board because no, it is focused on the board. But will people? I I'm... see the board here. Come stand where I was standing. Let me write something and see how it looks. Oh, I see. I see what you're what you see there. I'm going to use black. It's probably or maybe blue is better to be honest. But it's just green. No, that's too. It's too, we can't see. So I'll move it closer, but I don't want to. Um, forget me. Well, it's not a question of forgetting you. It's a question of the computer being in your way. I hear. Oh no, this is definitely. We're going to use black. No, they can't, can't see, see it. it. It's better that it be right in front there. Okay. Now, Charlie. Don't worry about getting in my way. I, 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 I know. I'll I know. Work around let's it. see. Let's... It's shiny. That's part of the problem. Oh, that's good. Except I think it'll be backwards. Oh, nuts. How are we doing? Is there a reverse? I don't think so. How do I do with that? I don't know. Hi, Greg. Okay. Um, I also now, because I'm about to give a talk uh, on uh, language, uh, I don't have, anyway, I don't have much time. Anyway, talk. Mirror my video. Yeah. I don't care. What do I care? Perfect. Oh my God. Baruch Hashem. How much? I, I flipped the video. Okay, you're wonderful. Thank you. Uh, 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 and that's wonderful, Greg. I, I don't. How does it all? It doesn't matter how it worked out. It matters that it worked out. God, which means you could then even you can connect in any of the rooms because all the other rooms also have the telephone line. Uh huh. 
Yeah, we know that already. <laughs> stuff way back yeah. on the family in the 1700s. Mm -hmm. And we got DNA on it and everything to combine everything. Mm -hmm. His name is Ruben? Somebody no. in his family and you actually contacted him. So he actually spoke to you. Well then I'm sure he his, his name, his name I is Einbinder. I've got about 23,000 people on my major tree. I've got other trees that I can't figure how they fit in. Well, you're a part. <laughs> I, I don't know half the time whether I'm coming or going. <laughs> so, 
Afraid is the answer mm -hmm. for everything. And anyway, uh, let me see. You hold your hands up. I can't see your facial expression, but it, it's it's a PTSD that you experience. That's what we're getting to. You're you're right, but it's your mother, not her. She is not the one who went through to grow up in Germany. She grew up in Cincinnati. Well, but it came through with the second generation. Mm -hmm. And what we have learned is that they cook nature versus nurture. No, uh, a lot of trauma is the three generations is passed down in DNA. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So the border, you can't, there is no border between nature and nurture. Mm -hmm. We just, oh, I am interested. Mm -hmm. I'm not certainly going to talk with this, but mm -hmm. that's in deference to my wife. Mm -hmm. she, <laughs> she wants me to do this. Um, I'm in very well being Japanese to, to people. Okay. I won't do this because my wife would prefer that I not. And, but we're okay. We all somehow all work. But you, you're you're right. You know the um, it's the the, FD, the PDSD. Look, I went to the Iraq War. I know. My, I spoke with my wife. I had a cell a satellite phone. I spoke for morning and evening my time from Baghdad. And um, I was you know there's gunfire in the background. There's no war. Mm -hmm. And imagine what it did to her. Yeah. And I sort of you learned to accept it, but I came back to the United States 
I didn't know I was only going to be here for a week. And then I had to go to something in Istanbul. I'm sitting with a bunch of friends at this thing in Istanbul in a garden, which was all lit up and a light bulb blew. And I went <sighs> like that. And then one of my friends, my, who I was on the phone with pretty much every day when I was in Iraq, um, she called right away. She called my wife and said, I finally understood what Harold meant to me. because she saw yeah. a light bulb post traumatic, exactly yeah. as you say. Yeah. It's amazing. So. We had a situation when my son was 13, our uh, second child. We yeah. went to Israel for six weeks. We both arranged with our job that we would take our full vacation for the year. To complete, so I was able to stay for six weeks, he was able to stay for a month. And uh, when I was the time for me to leave, we were uh, it was in the intifada, and our son, they were we would go, I was going to the hotel on the number one bus at that time. The glass windows were not protected, and they were throwing rocks, and they hit, they hit my son, and he had skull fracture. So we were stuck. In Israel longer, and I called America, and he had to come back. That's the whole story. But what I'm getting back at, what I'm getting at is, it was a whole big write up in, in the Jewish, um, in the Jerusalem What's his name? His name Adam K. That's I'm, I'm figuring out the years. We'll see. Anyway, the thing is, he came back the next yeah. year. The paper wrote about it because they were so it was so um, encouraging. For the population that we came back. In, in the meantime, my legs were shaking. I was very scared to come back. And, uh, yes, because there was a passion there. Right? That, that I, you know, I'll be nervous. I haven't done it. I'll be nervous to go on the number one bus. Should I ask you, obviously, there's some form of psychology? No. But you know, <laughs> you're thinking, by the way, in those previous. I can never say it, but yeah, yes, yes. Right. Um, you, uh, from my experience, um, the best way, and I've had to deal with a lot of trauma like that in my life, yeah. um, okay. is you right away get up and do it. You go right back. Yeah, so it's like getting in a car accident. Yes. Really should get behind the wheel. Again. Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, my so the third child, not my youngest, but my my third child, she also got a little bit of injury. She I she was ready to go back to Israel. She was uh, she, I mean she will go eventually, but she hasn't yet. I just jumped for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a people from Southern Israel named Uri. It's a Habo name which many years ago was a leftist or whatever. My basic Hebrew teacher is from way back when she was there. And so I went to visit her. And I used to do high dives. I, uh, I I went off and I hit my head on the side of the from the high dive mm -hmm. on the side of the mm -hmm. pool and I ended up the bottom of the pool. Mm -hmm. I don't I somehow got out. I do not know how. And you, you don't know, but I mean, she, my instant reaction mm -hmm. is I relive this as you're talking about this. Mm -hmm. It's the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I have not been on a high dive since the last time. I'm, I'm 15 years old again. If you're 15, you deal with it. When you get older, you're smart. You don't go up and high dive. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's this thing I was going on with the Ukraine and what's happening. So I was talking to a friend of mine who she was six years old when she said she remembers when the Russians came into Hungary and she remembers she she's now in her at age 1945 and she was six, she's born in 39. She, no, she's not it was 1956 when she left. Oh, Hungary. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she she's reliving now what she felt at six years old. Makes sense. Oh, oh yeah. Another question of the doctor. 
Voi domani in Italia no. Uh, I, I'm about to give a talk on Hebrew language. Uh, can I tell you in about an hour or something like that? <laughs> Listen, um, call worms. Okay, I know he's up. Uh, let me uh, call him on WhatsApp. Um, well, I'm going to give it to you verbally now, okay? So can you describe it? <laughs> now we're getting to the end of my image. Uh, okay. Can I please give you the number, okay? Uh, okay, it, so it's one because it's the United States. Two zero two. Uh, seven four six. Uh, I know the whole mattress. Zero zero. Is that Yiddish? Ah, sufferism. Okay, anyway, two zero four six. Okay. Two, two, zero. Yeah. Oh, it's five. Oh, it's four. Maybe it's I placed it. Whatever. Okay. Yes. No. Seven, four, six, two, zero, four, six. Oh, this is six. Oh, what I need. Okay, very good. Call to. I'll talk to you later. You too. Characters in the world. This guy is a little bit ahead of his. We were. I, I do a lot of nuts and things in life. It's not just. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a little bit not. He is the head of a, a, a prestigious kid. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, my very nice face. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Uh, he's. Uh, what? Which I, I'd rather not say because oh, okay. all of our conversation. I mean, I can't tell you what I'm talking about, and that's much more interesting. <laughs> his his. Uh, uh, He's, they're deeply involved in Ukraine. And uh, it's not Lubovitch. There's no Lubovitch at Rebbe today. This is a Rebbe of another. And, and he, uh, we have, yeah, who's sleeping today? You can't find the picture. It's not the one in the No, there's no way to come in the main door. Well, how about if someone comes in the side door? <laughs> Listen, I went into where I spoke last week. It's still set up for I found it with the Michael was last night. It's all set up. They didn't know what I was talking about. It's all right. Sorry? No, you were right. And I'm going to make more hot air, so it works. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, just to give you an example, they're trying to get their people out. Uh, three buses left Kiev today towards one of the borders. We need tremendous sales of the Shemaya to get everyone over. This is one of his uh, one of his helpers, the guy that I was just speaking with. Um, just for an idea so far, buses cost $30,000 each. Recent experience, but in the midway, they ask for more. Uh, how they're managing to get their people and their people 
the thing is if they're males and the Ukrainian citizens, from 18 from 18 from 18 you just said something extremely important uh yeah i i, I there is how can any of can can anybody who can you hear me Oy vey. Um, I, I don't have a microphone. Well, I'm no, but if anybody is going to be listening through here, we, there are only two people that are here listed right at the moment. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll wait just another uh, minute for whatever thing. Uh, the amount of behind the scenes things. By the way, we have a real Jewish hero in the, in the, who's being made. You know, in, in Europe, in, in Europe, we Jews look at our history in Ukraine, especially. The, that's where the, the worst pogroms were there are basically in Bessarabia, which is now Moldova, uh, and, and part of Ukraine. Uh, and here's this comedian, who, by the way, very much cares about being Jewish. He actually, when he was younger, wanted to go to Israel, and his father said, no. There are pictures of him on the wall you can see with a kippah and his and davening and all this. This is, you know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, I, I can only make the comment, having been, uh, spent so many years working with uh, people who are experts on foreign policy and they've been doing it their whole lives and they know of course what's best the ones who really do a good job are people they could be looking like this it doesn't matter what they look like it doesn't matter what color their hair is they have real world experience what's the verdict on the microphone Thank you. Okay. Um, these are the people <laughs> who save the world, who change history. They could be new, also movie actors like a guy named Reagan. It's unbelievable what these people do because they're not wedded to this is the way we do it. Come on. Um, I talked before about the Arab Israeli and the things in, in the first uh, two, whatever talk. How many years has this conflict been going on? Yeah. Uh, at least 100. And actually, it's about 140 in modern terms. But since in Islam, Muslims must rule whatever land they, they have forever, and I remember saying this, can there therefore be peace between, as we understand it, no. between us and them now, there can't be. No. But all I'm asking, and I don't, I don't have a bureaucratic background. You can imagine the bureaucrats hated me. I don't have a bureaucratic background. But what we know, um, what we know is that, and they keep trying, we're going to find a way to make peace. The only way to make peace in the Middle East, it's always temporary. And why do you think the Gulfies in Bahrain, and this is not what I'm talking about today, what are the people in the Gulf, in Bahrain or in the, in the Emirates, make peace with Israel? Purely in the self-interest. First and foremost, this is a defense pact. Of course, they And also economic. Absolutely, you know, you're right. But remember, what is economic? These guys got tons of money. They want to make more. I don't, apparently, if you have money, which we certainly don't, um, you know, there's never enough. I've, I've asked very wealthy people, how much is enough? Yeah. There's always someone who has more. In my response, we have nothing to do here. We don't have anything. Well, then I'm not human. Neither is my wife. Uh, oh, yes, very much so. Thank you. So, um, uh, 
<laughs> is that a barbecue? Is that a, is that a microphone? Yes. It's, it's an amplifier. Oh, it says it's recording it. Anyway, um, all I'm saying is that when I would say the things that I was saying in government, uh, you can imagine that the bureaucrats, there's a phrase that's called, I'm going after the rice bowl. What is the rice bowl? They make a living from keeping conflict, managing conflicts. So keeping the Arab-Israeli uh, 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 conflict going, war, whatever it is, is in their interest. And some idiot like me comes along and says, no, if you understand it in their terms, using their culture, what is culture? The way people do things, the way people think about the world. You do that, my answer is I want to get rid of this conflict. And Netanyahu got it, which is you must be strong. In the Middle East, if they're at your feet or at your throat. And so as long as Israel is strong, all these guys are going to say, hey, we need Israel. That's what's happening. And it's, you know, and once, oh, Baruch Hashem, will that go uh, through the computer as well? Okay. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what's going on on the computer. Uh, and, and this is the story also of Ukraine. We have this guy, Zelensky, a comedian. What the hell does he know about politics? No, he, he was a KGB guy. No, he was, I, I, I didn't know that. I mean, you know, what? Yeah, he, he was, uh, he grew up in St. Petersburg. And, and please, we Jews want everybody to love us. I know I have a problem like that as well. That's not what politics is all about. It's interests. And Putin loves, there's no question, he was growing up, he was saved by, basically, he would come home to nothing, and it was his religious Jewish neighbor. He was a Shabbos guy. But you know what? It's fine and dandy. Russia's interests have nothing to do with his feelings. <coughs> he knows it. And uh, on, the, on the whole, and just understand one thing. Think for a moment. What is the most important city for Jews in the world, if you care about being Jewish? <laughs> Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. No, of course. So what's, what's going on here? Now let me ask the following question. What's the most important city for Russians historically? No. No. Here's why. Yeah. Moscow was a slum. St. Petersburg was only in the 1700s. That's when Peter the Great and Catherine the Great built the whole thing. It was nothing. And Russian culture is much older than that. And it starts with a guy named Vladimir, who was head of what was called Kiev and Kiev, you hear the word, yeah, yeah. Rus. He ruled, the Russian state started in Kiev, and that's where they accepted Orthodox Christianity. Yeah, so what is for Russian culture, their Jerusalem, Kiev. Now, I'm not talking politics today, but I'm just trying to tell you what that place means to them. Yes. This one, one, two. Three. Oh, you're wonderful. Yay! Thank you so much. Can I? Well, it, oh, good, good. It'll go. Thank you, dude. All right. As far as you want to go. But doesn't this put uh, Bennett in a very difficult position because Yair Lapid is uh, for the Ukrainians and Bennett has. In your horror, you're not for the Ukrainians. No, 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 no. I am. He's in a very <laughs> difficult position. Guess what? It leadership requires decision making, and there, from a psychological point of view, things that we were talking about before. Imagine yourself. You're in the middle of a field of raw eggs. Wherever you step, you're going to break. There's no perfect solution to things. If you're in a position of leadership, you must decide. What does that mean? It's this, you know, it's that you make a decision which certain people are going to like by definition, and certain people are not going to like. That's what leadership is all about. 
do you remember it's it's unrelated uh, there was a guy who worked with ayatollah khomeini by the name they called it goats by day um he was yeah what was our day is Zade means son of what is the hebrew word the arab word kotov which is the same which is kotev in hebrew which means to polarize it means one who polarizes the community. He's the leader that draws his family he, to, toward people towards him. Now, I agree with I agree with this guy, but there are other people who won't. So he's going to have enemies. That's leadership. That's what a rabbi is. There are people who look at things. He's the one who polarizes the community, but not in a negative sense. He draws people towards him. This character right over here. I think I find him fascinating. Reb Moshe, he knows exactly what I think. He's 21 years older than I am, and I'm a model for me. And he knows exactly what I'm, I'm your face is turning a bit red. That's okay. <laughs> but I'm not here to talk about all these things this morning. And by the way, I told but Rabbi not, Green here. But not every leadership is correct because the Arabs, the Muslims, are bowing to Mecca. What the cholera does it work in Yerushalayim? Please, whatever is. I have such a big problem with Please. I can answer this quite easily. Who can, who who in 637 38 captured Jerusalem? The Turks. There were no Turks back. They were in Central Asia at the time. Who? The Arabs coming out of the desert. The Muslims. And if they captured it forever. No, sir, I'm a Palestinian. No, no, please. You're I get it. We talked about this. You're talking our language. I'm talking how they see the world. It doesn't matter. You're trying to understand what's in their minds, how they think about things. What we think doesn't matter. I mean, look, there's a sort of conversion that's going on this week. Um, my wife's nephew is marrying uh, a girl, and she's converting conservative. Jewish, oh yeah. Well, I think she's converted that politically because her, my nephew is uh, very conservative politically. Now, I want, how many in this room are prepared to accept a conversion, a conservative conser conversion as being halakhically Jewish? One hand goes up, two hands, three. My point is, there's, that is our way of thinking versus their way of thinking. I'm not saying it's all equal, I'm saying, you must understand others as they understand themselves. That's why Jerusalem matters. It's theirs. We know otherwise. Don't know. Never. But that's their point too. Never. Which is why there won't be peace. As long as, but if we're strong and we have confidence in ourselves, like this particular Rebbe who was who called before, um, I can only tell you everything will be fine. Look, it's 10.15 and it's not fair. I'm supposed to discuss one of them, and I told Rabbi Green, I'm happy to continue any of the subjects that I did. This is supposedly the last thing, but you know, I, I can be free on Monday, Monday uh, mornings. And if you're not going to be here, you, if you want to watch it, watch on Zoom. It. It's your business. Right. I'm happy to do it. And I, and any of these things, look, I'm 72 by this time in life, and almost 72 and a half. Um, by this time in life. I have a bit of experience. If you find me, I'm, I'm a clown. And I, I'm the other thing is I'm certainly not. This is why the idea of titles. The only title that I respect in this world is your title and your title. Ah, uh, you're better than I am. The better answer. I was going to say I will use the word rabbi for anyone who has smicha no, halachiki. Um, you know what PhD stands for, guys? Papa has done that good. Mine is piled high and deadly, and you know what that is. I'm going to have to use another example for this today. Okay, guys, my my job today is to talk about the glories of, of all. I know a lot of languages. There's nothing like Hebrew. It is the most fascinating, mathematically almost perfect language in the world. You do a minus one, you take away something, you got to compensate for it. There are a lot of things in the Tanakh, and the goal that I would like to do is to give you some insights 
in how to understand what is in the Tanakh. And I'm using a method which is we've done in the past, we Jews, but very rarely. And that is, I'll use anything I possibly can to understand the meaning of a word. Hebrew, a very ancient language, has sister languages. One of them, if anybody who studied Talmud, is Aramaic. And there, for example, this, and I'll get back to this in a moment. How do you say you, like you're going to do this in Aramaic? Um, 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 there's a nun. We're going to get back to this in a moment. And in Hebrew, no nun, aka. Arabic is ant. Do we know how to say nose in Aramaic? Is it ever in the Talmud? I'm not a Talmud expert. Well, this we say af in Hebrew. What is the plural of af? I'm, there, most people don't have two noses. No, it's apim. There's a dagesh, a dot, because originally a dot means a nun nufelit, a nun falls, the letter before. You're going to see what this does. And just to give you a, a, another little appetite, if anybody has seen the word chazir, you know, with, everybody knows what chazir is, I assume, right? Do you know there's a dot in the Zion? You know what that dot means? Most of the time, nun nufelit, a nun falls right before it. So what was the original word for pig in Semitic languages, Arabic, Aramaic, and all this? Ah, someone got the exact word in Arabic. Who said it? Much of you said it. Chanzir. That's exactly. Because the nun falls off if it's nothing underneath it. Chan, n. And the next letter has to therefore have a dot, which means double it. That's why I said mathematically, nothing loses. It, it falls off. What about the word min? Min, min habayit. No, 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 no. Min from. Okay, but when you want to put a mem before something, mehabayit, right? Why? No, because the nun lo it, and if what it is is you got to compensate for it. So the me becomes the dot, 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 the dot went right down and sat next to the e became a eh, mehabite. Nothing's lost. But the insights into this are amazing. Now, I just want to say um, what I'm doing is going to, at times, may sound non halachic. It's not. The Rashban, uh, the grandson of, of Rashi, was really into the simple meanings of words. But we know a lot more about the history of Semitic languages, Arabic, Aramaic, all sorts of unbelievable things than we did back then. A lot of things have been discovered. Languages are long dead. And they give us amazing in, in, uh, um, insight into language. I'm going to take the first thing I want to do find the black pen one second thank you no no I have this one thank you thank you okay watch this most words the overwhelming word amount of words in hebrew and in aramaic and in arabic and a bunch of other semitic languages semitic comes from the word shem you know there was three sons yes okay I'm going to put in Hebrew letters, and someone criticized me. Um, uh, I'm going to write in handwriting. It's easier for me. This, uh, I'm going to use a final letter. What is that root? No, no, no. Go for three letters until you know otherwise. Three letter roots. Oh, is it really? Today, it's no question about it. And certainly, and if you go for the Talmud and things like this, it always means lechem. It always means bread. How ancient is Hebrew? Ancient, it's 300,000 years ago. Let me ask you a question. What 
we are, and our laws, and guys, if you, again, you, you know Talmud, which I don't, correct me if I'm wrong. We, our laws are by and large for an agricultural people. Oh yeah. What is the basic food of an agricultural people? Wheat, right. Now, instead of thinking, to show you how all this works, if you understand lechem as uh, wheat, um, now let's use this mentality to try to understand what are the Arabs? What type of people are they originally and still mentally? Nomadic. nomadic. What is the basic food for nomads? Animals. No, is it we? What do you have? You're on fields, you're moving. What? And what is lamb? Meat. So this word, I'm going to write it. This is a lamid het mem. Uh, people were, she said to me in the first lecture I gave, how come you wrote all the Arabic words in Hebrew letters, in English letters? I said, I'm not trying to show the world how great I am. Um, I want you to understand. And for those who don't know Hebrew letters, L, and this, it's not an H, it's not a H, but H, which in modern Hebrew is H. And I, I'm not going to go into the history. I could teach a whole course on this is nothing. So since the Arabs are nomads, so the word laham and is meat, understandable, right? Using this mentality, Amharic, which is the it's the, the, the pre whatever in Ethiopia, the, the major religious whatever language, they are by and large, they're domestic, they, they're settled people, but their basic thing that they do, they're Beef herders, cow herders. So what do you think for them that word means in Amharic? You're, you're, it, it, but it, they, all these things means nourishment, food. It means cow, because that's what they basically eat. And just one other thing, and I'm giving you, the, this is all the Middle East, and this is the milieu in which Hebrew developed. Now, one other thing. I'm not a good at drawing maps, but um, do I? Here is Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, okay, and up here I'm going to write E I E Y. Eretz Israel is up there. This is Saudi Arabia. Now, down here, and an island off of this is Yemen. Here is an island called. It's a small island, but big enough to house a population. It's called Socotra. And they speak a version of Arabic. Very, it's distantly related. It's not completely mutually intelligible. They're an island. What surrounds an island? Water. Would you? Yes. What does that root mean? For them, it means fish. One of the articles that was sent out <coughs> I think uh, Andrea sent out uh, uh, like a bunch of papers that is the whole history of that word. I'm only trying to get you to think in terms of how to understand things. Lechem, for us, we're settled people. For You got now for the Arabs, they're really nomadic people. And one of the things the Israel haters were trying to say, Israel refers to Bethlehem, the city, as the house of bread. What the hell do they know? It's Beit Laham, the house of meat. This is, I find anything I can to put you down. That's their culture to each other. So of course they're doing it to us. Now, um, I wanna give you some insights. And again, I'm very much within the framework of how Rashbam is doing it, but we know a lot more today. What? Oh, Reb can I have the, uh, here, okay. One second, guys, I just need to get the eraser. Thank you. Okay, now I'm gonna leave just, I'm a, here now we're gonna get insights on how we can do things and understand things. Okay, I've left this root here. 
If I put a yud in front of it, does it mean something to you? Shame. Yeah. Shame. Okay. Isn't it interesting? We have many times Hashem with a yud in front of there. Tzvaot. What does the word tzva mean? Army. Army. But how is it translated most of the time in English? The Lord of Hosts. Oh, so Hashem is hosting parties. Um, is that, this is why it makes no sense, but watch this. In old Arabic, from about 2,600 years ago, and we do have things from, there is this root. Um, I, again, uh, again, Arabic is a three-letter language too. And I'll write it in, in for those who, you know, would prefer to see it. Hey, Vav, hey. And Vav in Hebrew is a W, it's not a V. We Ashkenazim screwed the language up. It never was, a, uh, it only 2,000 years ago became because we lost the ability to say what. And you know people who uh, know other languages who can't say what. When we got to Europe, we began to listen to others and we lost the ability. Um, now, the question is, what does this root mean? The root. No, it's ancient Arabic, a sister language of Hebrew. That's why I mentioned it. It means power, strength in Arabic. In, in this is all Arabic. And again, when Hebrew was formed and all that, why is this important? Now, what does Hashem Tzvaot, does that make sense to you now? The guy's got an armies. That's what Hashem Tzvaot means. Now, and it's, it's amazing once you look at these things, what you see. I'll tell you who is very good at these things. Um, there was a guy, Nahum Salma, who was a professor in, um, at Brandeis and ended his life here in Boca Raton. He, he didn't, his life ended. He did not end his life. No. Good man. Very, very man. He did, a, he and his students did a five-part series uh, on uh, it's a commentary to give one moment uh, um, a commentary on the Torah and he in the line with the Rashvam he has all these things with roots because he and his students knew all, all these Semitic languages and it's once you know one it's like buy one get one free once you know one you know what you're looking for Oh, geez. I'm sorry, guys. I thought I turned this off. No, this is the Rebbe's assistant that just called before. And anyway, I'm not dealing with this. Uh, I dealt with the Rebbe, it's enough. Anyway, uh, does this make sense to you now? Anytime. Now, watch this. Remember, okay, in the morning davening, we have Az Yashir Moshe. You know, Whatever Oz means, let's say, at that point, then we, we tra don't, translation is like kissing through a sheet. It ain't the real thing, which is why English, which is a Christian culture language, it does not help us. It, it, it inhibits us from understanding. Now, in the Az Yashir Moshe, we have Oz Vazimra. You're going in the right direction. All I'm trying to do is help you think about. It. I don't do handwriting very well. I mean, or, or print. Uh, if you, I'll just do it this way. Oh, Jesus, Jesus doesn't help. Now, watch this, guys. Please just buy it. The more important is, I'm just trying to. Do a little. I'm sorry if I messed it up. Okay, watch this. Hebrew, Arabic, all these languages have what are called doublets. There are many times we'll hear, like, she was beautiful and pretty. You two words which, in essence, say the same thing. And if you look at the rest of us, uh, 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 and you will see throughout the Torah, there are many of these doublets. 
But the way this is translated, and I believe totally incorrectly, and I'll explain in a moment why, Oz is power. Zimha is, means one of two things. It either means the way that it's invariably trained, singing and song. We don't have doublets like that. There's th it's a different concept, context. Um, the other, these, these moments also to pick olives, and that, of course, has nothing to do with the whole thing here. Now, what is? No, 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 no. You'll see, you'll see. Look, yeah. Of course. It's power. 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 Yeah, yeah. Now, what I'm telling you is this word in ancient Arabic, he and Hebrew, but no one even thinks about it. If it is a the same word, may same meaning, it has to have something to do with power, strength. And this word here, the Zion, used to have two pronunciations. 2,600 years ago, they united into the Zion we know today. It was the, like the boy, the, and the z, and they became a Zion in Hebrew. Vamra, which is that, it is this, the one which was the, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, let's just, I'm, I'm sorry for everybody, I'm kidding. Um, Vamra means in old Arabic, in old Hebrew now, what do you think? It has to mean something similar to Oz. And it does. Okay. Yes. So Oz Vazimra means, I know we want to come up with all these marvelous people. She, they're fun and dandy, but they're not 100%. We now know these old things. And it's as obvious as all this is is normal, beautiful um, biblical Hebrew. And, and Hebrew, biblical Hebrew is awesome. Absolutely awesome. When you get into what is going on in the, now, I ask you this, and this is going to, I promise, is going to be controversial. Okay. Now, I just did the, the, the two letters, Z and Z became Z in Hebrew, 20, that's 2,600 years ago. We know these things because we have other things. How do we know there are no digital recordings, to the best of my knowledge, from 2,600 years ago? How do we know then? We have descriptions. People write about it in other languages, in other scripts. I'll give you an example. Anybody ever heard of Cicero, yeah. the Latin poet? Okay, I have a question. It was translated into Greek. Now, Greek has both a s and a k. Kikaro. Why? He's, it's in, in Greek. I don't know Greek. It's kikaron. That's it. In, in, in. So it is in essence saying is since they had a sir, they could have translated this as that's how we know. And by the way, original Latin, all seas are k. And when the Jews moved north, the, the k for C I and C E, it became s. It changed. That's normal language changes. We all, all of us in this room are old enough to remember the word criticism used to be in English a neutral word. Literary criticism, for example. If someone is criticizing you today, criticism is negative. That has happened in our lifetime. But we need a neutral word. So all of a sudden, we have a modern word from the same source. It's called critique. This is how language works. It's alive. It moves. It's, it changes. Now, you're going to get mad at me or not get mad at me. It's your business. And it'll be the women in the room who will probably get more mad. What does this root mean in Hebrew? What is the root? Okay, you're going exactly where I'd like you to go. Watch. The root has to do with memory, right? Zachor is called. Zecher Amalek, Zecher Amalek. Okay, 
No, wait. That's that root. So we're not remember all we were going for is roots. So that has two meanings, as we said. Number one, it's remember. Remember. Okay, you now all falling into the trap I want you to. <laughs> You'll see. Remember and mail. Now you say to yourself, hmm, what does mail and memory have to do in common? Now I'm going to play another game for you. Watch this. And if you don't believe me, I want you to just open any C door and do it at home. I in, in the things that were sent out, it's all in there. The, how, what does this word mean? Alif Yud Shin. Meaning? A man. What is the feminine of that? Is it really? Please. That, the, the, ish, the, the yud is in there for a grammatical reason. I'm not going to get into it. I could teach a course on this whole thing. But I just want to give you like an appetite for these sorts of things. If you look. The Aleph, I'm going to I'm going to use this. If you look in anything, Isha has a dot in it, right? Mm -hmm. So what it means is Isha. Whenever you see a dot, double it. There are two types of dagashes. There are actually three dots in Hebrew, but that means double it. Now, what did we have before with Chazir and Chanzir? Nun. So what do you think? Why is there's no reason for a, a, the shin to have a dot? Except, who said it? And nosh on the shin, the nun comes back. This is not, oh, it's not irregular. Once you understand how the patterns work, it all makes sense. Now here comes a problem. And this is where you may want to throw rotten tomatoes or whatever you want to do through the screen. Okay. What is the root here? Remember, three letter roots. Many times, our lips are not really part of the roots. Nasha. Have anybody heard of the name Menashe, one of Yosef's sons? What, yeah, uh -oh. yes. What does that mean? Rabbi Green, got it. Forgotten. And in standard Arabic, a sheen in, Arab, in Hebrew is a scene almost always in Arabic. So, Anna, Ani, Nasit, I forgot. Nun, they have a scene instead of a, and a you. Anna, Nasit, I forgot. This is a supposition. Remember we had remember and mail. What does this mean? Forget and female. Now why? I told you you're gonna get mad. Okay, now why? <laughs> who runs the household where we were mostly in, it's the woman who run the household no let's just go back to the Tanakh who's Abraham Avinu's mother mother I asked for the mother all we know is about his uh, mother the only time women are mentioned is when they are important. The, the, remember, the Torah is in essence a telegram. I, they used to have such things in old days. And it, it gives you the knowledge you need to know. What was Avram's wife's name? Is she important? Obviously. We know her. Avram's mother? Uh, he must have had a mother. How could you not? But it's forgotten. Is she, you know, I don't even think they mentioned the, the Torah. Tel they do? His wife. Oh, no. No, her, his, there's never a okay. And all I'm arguing is that we know, and it's in Semitic society, when we are called up to the Torah, it's you, son of 
Your father. Anybody ever figure out why you make a Misha Berach with the mother's name? Because the Hanukkah is Mishabedach. Never sure about the mother. Today in the DNA, you can be sure of the father, too. By the way, the Ishtar is shy to take the Yud in the E. You're taking, yeah. I'm taking you. No, okay. You're right. Now, give you um another whatever and and this nun thing is huge and once you look i i'm telling you if you want to understand the Torah, first of all english is nothing more than a christian culture language and so the result there is you is a that takes you off the derich it takes you away um here's another route and again when you see the difference um, and I know that there are commentaries which go on and on about this because a lot of the commentators did not know that in the beginning there were two chets in Hebrew. One was chet as we know it, the Hebrew word for brother, which is uh -huh. ach. And in Arabic, uh -huh. no, in Arabic it's also ach, ya achi, ya oh. Achi, my brother. Arabic and Hebrew, I know they look different, but they're not. They're, they're really the same origins. You have the ch, I'm going to write with a little dot on top of it like this. And then there was, there is the he, like you would see, you've heard, like maybe Middle Eastern Jews or anybody who speaks Arabic says he. The word, and, and most of them, there are very few words which use this. Now, does that how, anybody know how to say fireplace in Hebrew? You do. Ah, yeah. Now, a brother is with he, and the fireplace is with he. Why am I bringing this all up? This root here. What does it mean? Someone said sin, or oh, what a Christian word. Chet <laughs> means missing the mark. I sh I'm supposed to do what? You know, I didn't dive in on time. Chatati. Chatati. I made a mistake. I didn't live up to what I was supposed to. That's the real meaning. And in every other Semitic language, that's what it means. Chata in Arabic with chet. Chata is a mistake. Same language, please. I know it looks different. Now, watch this. We have chata, but we have this word. And we, it means to purify, to make something to hope. Isn't it weird that the negative and how positive this is and how negative that is? There's a reason for it. They're different roots. These two united. Again, it's about 2,600 years ago, maybe 25. We don't know, but it's back then. And they became one. And now you have these commentaries of why it's this and why it's that. That's different roots. Chet and Chet. Modern Hebrew, the correct pronunciation for all of them, already 2,600 years ago for us, is he. It's not he, but Ashkenazim, we lost this ability. And in Europe, that's why it all became he. In Persian, the language of Iran, because they got most of, you know, they're Muslims, they got this from the Arabs, they couldn't say he, but they write it as he. Or no, they say it as he. We in Europe hey, it became because everybody had chit. please understand it's all context. I could go on and on and on. I'm going to leave with one last thing. Um, I have absolutely saying no problem saying hallelujah. Oh, we're not supposed to say God's name, right? What a proof we're not because his name is not Yah, but. We have lost the ability to put 
an H sound at the end of a word. I am going to, okay, there's nothing wrong with me doing this. And I'm about to erase it. And I do care about our tradition. So I'm not racing, God forbid, I'm not erasing God's name. But if you look wherever it is written, always the Hebrew, because Hebrew is, don't, it's the translation doesn't help you. If I'm going to put, there's yeah, and I'm going to put a long space in it, like I'm not going to do it. There is a dot in there. The dot tells you, pronounce it, hey. No, hey. Pronounce the H sound. <sighs> well, okay. The way, if, if, if you want this, again, in the form of teaching, I'm going to say as if we're davening, it should be hallelujah. <sighs> That's what the Kodama peak. It's not called the Dagesh. It's just, it's exactly the same. So therefore saying yeah means nothing. So say hallelujah all you want. You're not using God's name. This together is God's name. So when I done hallelujah. All the whatever Nishama means soul. And I said whatever because soul is a Christian concept. We have something much deeper than that. And it comes from what does Nishama come from? Lin Shom to breathe. Nun Shin Mem. Lin Shom Nashanti. I breathe. I breathe. Breathed. Breathe. Breath. This is the awesomeness of our language. And it's why of all the languages that I know. There is nothing as fascinating as Hebrew. And if you take all the languages that are surrounding Hebrew, that are part of uh, what Hebrew is in, in context, and maybe I will just add one more thing. You know, Avraham Avinu grew up in a culture where he's the one Hashem found him and he found Hashem, right? Well, and we have all these names, Ariel, Daniel, all which have Aleph Lamed at the end. That's having to do with upstairs, right? Well, no, watch this. My, I was always curious, what did Avraham mean? What culture he grew up in? What did they believe in? Can we really know? We only have hints. Now watch this, guys. Let's look. These people believed in stuff. It's the Middle East. People believe in things. Watch this. Hold on. I don't know if you know how to father, right? Okay. What was his name? Okay. How do we spell terach? And there is a yud in there. What's the shorish? What is the root? Three letters. Give me a hint. The taf is extra. What, is, what does that mean? What does it mean? Moon. Ah. Does that name have something that was moon? Who, uh, who was this guy, Lavan? You remember him? Uh, what, what is that? What is it? Moon. I remember one of these women who was an ancestor, I think, of Rivka? Milka? You know what she is? No. no. Well, it's the same root you got. It's the same root. But what it is in that area where we're from, it was, it was the moon god. You say, wait a minute, let's go on. Uh, uh, what did I, who was I just told? Milka. And this does not have a yun in it, although it's with a, okay. And uh, 
Uh, oh my God. Oh yes. Have you heard, what was Avram's wife original name? Uh-huh. And guess what? That is the servant of the moon god. So I ask, but we don't know. Or I, I certainly don't know. Since like we have all these things which have Aleph Lamed at the end, Ariel, but all that I mentioned before, and we're celebrating our God. Why are all these things by coincidence? Is it a coincidence? They're celebrating their God. These people weren't Jews yet. We weren't, we were descended from them, but we weren't Jews yet. Avraham Avinu had not found God or God, whatever, however, whoever found at home or however they united in whatever way. Amazing. So my question, and I have no answer to this, since all these things have to do with the moon, and it is in the Middle East, you always celebrate that. Look at all these names in Arabic, Abdullah, uh, you know, um, uh, Azizullah, whatever, Hamdullah. They're celebrating there. Well, well, and that just gives me, uh oh, my wife's going to kill me. I just got, oh, it's erasable ink. That's good. I got it in my shirt. Okay, the root of their God's name. Is this what? What what do we have in Tehillim? What is the name of our God? What does the dot mean? <sighs> Pronounce it. And the Allah. And what it is, this is what it is was originally in Arabic. Same name. Remember, if it's in uh if it's an O in Hebrew, O ha, we had O ah, it should be actually. If it's an O, it should be in Arabic. An O in Hebrew is usually a ah in Arabic. Shalom, salam, different meanings, but same origin of the word. O olam, world, one of the words in Arabic for world is alim. It's all is ah. If you use all these languages together, the insights that you get on who and what we are are huge. It is five of eleven. I want to just say one other thing. Here is by far the best book ever written on the Hebrew language. How the Hebrew language grew. This man is long dead, Edward Horowitz. He has grandchildren and great grandchildren who live. In Alon Shvut, right outside, uh, it's in Gush Etzion. Yeah, yeah, south of Jerusalem. This guy, it's the history of how Hebrew developed, how to think about Hebrew, the whole business of the root system, and how you and how modern Hebrew today invent words as needed. And given the patterns of the way Hebrew works, people understand you right away. Which is why translating isn't necessary. For example, when I realized this, I was living in Jerusalem in a place called Katamun. Oh, no, excuse me, Katamuni. This was an area built for Kurdish families in um, the 50s. And I'm there in 70, 71. So what's the story? The, um, when I, once I learned how the Hebrew language works, I wanted to test it out on little kids to see if they'd understand me. The root, ein, zain, bet, means ein, zain, bet. What does it mean? No, Reb Mosh, you got it. Of course. It means to leave. Now, there is a construction in Hebrew called hifil. Hifil means very simply, whatever the root is, it's to cause it to happen. So I, so on this four-year-old, I'm asking, who didn't know how to read and write, I'm asking, I said the following, who azav? 
He left. I said, what, what does this mean? I'm going to create something that doesn't exist in Hebrew. Who lo azal? He azivo oto. Put it in the Hebrew. They left him. They, they, yes, they made him leave. They threw him out. And here's the four year old telling me this. She never heard the word before. Oh, if you never heard the word before, you don't know what it is. But if you know the Hebrew patterns and you know how to play with the language, you can do awesome, awesome things. That's, and, and it's, I, I don't even know where to begin, which is why everybody knows. Remember, we had the nun problem we had before that it, um, the word before the China virus was uh, uh, for a virus, in Hebrew and Hebrew, people said, Virus, virusim. Yeah, but it's not the word that everybody uses today. <laughs> Nagif. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the way to think about this, exactly. Nun, Gimel, Nun, Gimel, Fe, Pe. Now, you know it from Yiddish also. That's a final. Whatever you can see how great my handwriting is and why people love me. Uh, that's one of the things my wife and I share in common. People can't read our handwriting. Um, we can't read each other's either after all these years. Now, watch this. Nagif. Ne. Two dots under it. You put something in front of it or you put something around it. What happens? How do you say a plague in Yiddish? A magifa. I said that because a lot of people don't know Hebrew itself, but they magifa. Yes, and it, it is mangifa, mangifa, because the nun has to be there. It is what causes plagues, viruses. Did they know all these things about viruses? They knew something in their minds was related, but it comes from the root. Magifa is magifa. There's a dot in the gimel. Because the nun fell out, it should be mangefa. One other thing, what does lina give with the towel mean? To dry yourself. No, how do you say? Yeah, to, 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 to dry yourself off after you took a shower. Lina give it a yes. Wash your hands. Magave it. Mangave it became? Mug give it with a dot in the gimel because you gotta compensate. There are a few cases you can't compensate in Hebrew. These dots in the letters tell us their messages. They didn't put it there for fun. Everything there is there for a purpose. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Thank you very much. Okay. And, and Rabbi Green, if people want you, they have to, I'm happy to continue doing these things. But, um, uh, and, I, and I'll do one of the four or whatever types of things I did before. Okay, Chaybur. Whatever you do. Tam 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 in Arabic, Tam. Arabic, Tam, finished. Tamam, it's complete in Arabic. And, that's it. Please let me just uh, message my wife for a moment and then uh, happy to uh, do whatever, whatever. Okay, Chevrolet. Gamalno. I don't even know. Oh, Judy. One sec. This is my wife. Please. Jude? Um, I, I just finished. I bumped into Ted this morning and he knows that uh, we're meeting. Um, okay. I'm going to, uh, but you come over, I'll join you, okay? All I can tell you is uh, that I can't tell you. I can only tell you that I remember. Call down, call down, okay? Call him. Um, I'm going to arbitrarily choose somebody here, and you ask the question to my wife. How did it go? It went great, excellent. <laughs> but you know that, right? <laughs>
Yeah, but I got some unindelible ink on my shirt. Yes. Then don't come home. Sorry? Fine. I just want to tell you, thank God I didn't have you for all of them. Why? I would have never learned. It. Yes, you would have, but here's why. You do the olive, but you don't talk about all this stuff. I can teach a year's course on this, and the insights into the Torah are unbelievable. Well, now I can do it, though, but boy, it's just a little kids teach that. Oh, you don't need to back then. My daughter worked in computers. Yes. And with one word, she looked up the show and it was an American word. Administrative or something like that. Yeah. That they de-raised us. Yeah. The French don't do that. The French, they were, I understand, the computer stuff, they had to have their own. They're very, very strong. Not when they first started. Yeah. Yeah. Please, let's just the French have done this basically for cutting themselves. Yeah. 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 In French, and no one paid attention, so they cut themselves off. Uh -huh. That's not the law anymore. They uh -huh. they realized that. I, I, I was at a conference in Paris, an international conference, and everyone spoke English except the French. <laughs> was there translation? Huh? Was there translation? Yeah, translation. Yeah, that anyway, uh, I want to ask you about the stuff in top. My cousin, late cousin, lived in Israel. Had said that it's actually. We found tombstones in Greek. Yes. And there was a theta. Yes, you're right. Yeah, but here's one. The, the, there's something called Beget Kefet. The letters Bet, Vet, Kaf, Chaf, Kaf. Let's leave what you're talking about. There is Gimel with a dot, Gimel without a dot. The modern Hebrew Resh, which is not correct, it's R, like the Spanish. Letter, letter, whatever. And the Yeah, the the with. You know who he was? David. The with. That's the correct pronunciation. Way back when. What happened here? There is a principle. All these six letters. It's very hard to double the ones with the dagesh. How do you double it? Everything of these things which beg a tef, they move one step back in the mouth, and you can say it forever. But get the it's Hashem Echad. People go nuts. Hashem Echad. No, it's Echad. It's only can yeah, you can't do it. It's because it's the way it was. We lost this, and it's all there. Right in front of ours. The Spanish have that though also. In Spanish a D that we say is a D. They have as a T. Spanish have lost most of their voice letters. But they, they've got the thing. The D is a T to them. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. I thought it was, I thought it was Latin, you know, what they were. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Yes, please. If you, if you can keep them going. Talk some more. Anyway. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Sarna taught when you gave the example of couplets. Yeah. Sarna was a teacher. I had Sarna as a teacher. Wow. As a student, I had to get with you. We were very close. He was a mensch. He was actually related to a barber now. That's why I think he was drawn also to. Maybe I'm also descended from a barber. And that maybe is to be the I also. Who knows? So I don't know. He used to emphasize the, the concept of hendiadis. Oh, he used a lot of words in this that drive me nuts because I have to look in the dictionary. Yeah. I don't so understand. What does hendiadis mean? Hendiadis was exactly what you were saying, the doublet, where it's two words in biblical oh. Hebrew that come as a single concept. And his best example was Tohu Gumbo. Really? I had never thought of it. And that's it's a variant of the same thing. I had never thought of this. That uh, brought me back when, when uh, Sana had Smicha, by the way, but he never used his rabbinic title. He had it. Didn't know that. But he yeah. had it from Jews College. Oh, huh. in, in London. Yeah. yeah. And you know, he, before he came to the Yeah. he was the agrarian. Uh, Interesting. Interesting.
this of course i'm sure you know Jonathan. Jonathan. i don't know him personally yeah. but not from some i know because they were very close friends with my in-laws down here yeah. they lived around the corner he lived in montoya circle here uh, right near about the town shul yeah, I when I was an undergraduate there once I was teaching and uh, we had in our suite we had six guys and five of the six were Jewish studies major. Yeah. And and uh my wife, please one second. Sorry. Hi and sweetie. They talk similar. Okay. Um whatever you want, please call and say is he home already for Miss Dr. Singh, please. Okay. He, he said he, he wasn't coming home probably until like eleven thirty or something. You saw him at Shul this morning? Yes. So um okay, so what are, are you 